do a search on astronomy and surprise, I find it very interesting the sheer number of findings, even in recent years, that admit not just rather candid surprise by investigators about findings versus expectations, but how often there are statements about how conventional theory needs to be rethought or these findings lead us back to the drawing board or, or phrases like that. For example, comets like 67P that look like blackened ash-covered rock, not at all the dirty ice balls that our models would predict. Or pulsars that emit orders of magnitude more energy than our models would expect. Or more recently, for example, dwarf galaxies that are rotating around Andromeda in a way not at all explained or expected by our current, current theories of galaxy formation. There are mysteries closer at home. For example, the corona around the sun is uh, in the range of 3 million Kelvin, but it resides thousands of kilometers above the photosphere, which is in the range of 6,000 Kelvin. But in no way does this shake the story that we tell ourselves about the sun being a thermonuclear campfire in space. It seems that humans have a need to have stories that can be propped up as an explanation, regardless of the evidence that might contradict those stories. This is very primal, and I believe it stems from a very basic need to fill the darkness beyond the campfire with something other than the unknown. Well-accepted and repeated stories fill that void. We are in a mode, at least in the astrophysical and planetary sciences, where we go out looking to confirm our answers. We look for evidence to support the stories that we tell ourselves and that comfort us. Then we're surprised when these answers, when these confirmations are not forthcoming. But going out looking to confirm a story leads to a general approach of using our considerable creativity to then modify the story to suit what we've seen. The other problem with going out looking to confirm an existing story is that it means we only measure within the range that the existing theory would allow. For example, a concert instrument on the Rosetta mission to 67P comet is meant to measure the internal structure of the comet, but it was really only tested on ice. So that limits us, it sets certain expectations. I believe in the power of the provocative what if question. What if? Well, let's take 67P for an example. What if our eyes do not deceive us and what appears to be rock and the concert data we have so far would suggest it's a solid body, then what if it is solid rock? The problem with that is that the measurements of density that we've taken would suggest that it has a density of a fluff ball. It's a very low density object. Well, what if it is rock and we don't understand mass very well? What if our notion of how gravity and mass work is somehow flawed at a very fundamental level? Now that's a fascinating question. After all, both Newton's and Einstein's equations are descriptive. They're good mathematical models for the boundary conditions they're meant to be used in, but they really don't get at the fundamental physical mechanism of gravity. This is why a unified theory has been such an elusive quarry. What if 67P really is rock and its density is pointing us at something very fundamental about how mass and gravity work? Now, a what if question like that is surprisingly dangerous and provocative. Guaranteed it will elicit extremely emotional responses from those who make comments their livelihood. But it needn't be that way. Let us pretend for now we don't have all the answers. Let us take a few minutes out on a regular basis and ask some provocative what if questions. Let's not get emotional and let's follow where those questions lead. And that will be the theme of these recurring videos. Discovery lies in asking the big dangerous questions, not in confirming what we think we already know.